forgot to turn the mic on, my bad. <laughs> All right, hey, y'all, my name is Heidi, and I'm a child of God and a person of worth who is powerless over drugs, alcohol, codependency, and anger. Today, I have 330, 633 days in recovery. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. It's the best day ever. I know there may be some of you in here thinking that I always say that, and yes, I do, because it is the best day ever. <laughs> I love showing up on Mo to CR Monday and Friday because this program saved my life, literally. Yeah, it was a mess. It's coming up. I walked in the door on a Friday night, and someone was holding the door and welcomed me in. To those of you who have not heard my story, let me give you a little background of coming here. I showed up on a Friday morning for free groceries and got an invite to CR. My son heard a free hot meal, and at this point it had been a minute, but I reluctantly showed back up. I walked through the doors for the first time on July 21st, 2022. I was not really here to get recovery, but better yet drop my kids off to a safe place and take my life. You see, my son was five, my daughter was six, and we were living in the car due to my addiction, and I felt like I had nothing to offer them. Life was not worth living, but I was too scared to die. There's the actual photo of me and my daughter, you know, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. We're here. <laughs> From the moment that I was welcomed at the door, something changed inside of me. I remember looking scared, and someone asked me if this was my first time. Yeah, of course it was. While waiting in the cafe line for food, my kids were running around acting a fool like they do here on Monday nights. Y'all know how it is. Someone came over and asked me if they could help get their plates. They even had someone walk me over to meet the child care workers. Whoo, thank goodness. People were so friendly and they genuinely cared about me. So much so, the next picture is when I came back on Saturday to the Christmas in July party where I received Big book for the least amount of clean time. Now, y'all can't tell me anything because in that moment, I won something special. I was really excited. I'll never forget that day. Had I walked through the door the very first time and didn't feel a warm welcome that I experienced that night, I don't think I would have been standing here tonight. I was full of guilt and shame, and I didn't want to continue living life. I expected everyone else to be placing judgment on me, too. I continued to show up regularly. Even in my crazy state, Heidi the hot mess was, is and welcomed back, and I don't feel judged. I feel like I'm right at home with my people. You guys are my people. Yes. Woo! Why do I tell you this story today? Because we're going to be teaching on the five essentials, and we will cover our slides. You guys, we're going to say them again. Ready? Jesus. Amen. Twelve steps. steps. Sponsor. Meetings? Yes. Service. Yes. All right, that's exciting because we're going to talk about why you need to do it tonight. I would not be standing here today, literally, if not for the people serving in CR. Had it not been for them, I wouldn't be here. Service work is vital for life transformation. Jesus uses everyday people like us, just like me, y'all saw it, I was an everyday person, to share hope with others so they can find the same hope we have. Recovery ministries, along with traditional recovery, are here today because of service. And service work is essential for recovery programs. And what does essential mean? Absolutely necessary, extremely important. Just like breathing, and I have to remember to breathe tonight. because, You know, I'm like, <gasps> just need y'all to know that. Okay? Recovery ministries are traditional recovery recovery meetings do not happen without people doing service work. What do we mean by service? Bill W., one of the founders of AA, wrote this about service. Service is anything, whatever, that helps us to reach a fellow sufferer, ranging all the way from the 12th step itself to a phone call and a cup of coffee. That's awesome. Here at CR, that opens the door to a wide variety of ways we can serve others. Around here, that could be helping in the kitchen. I love it when you guys show up with food prep or serving on the line. It could be cleaning up, giving someone a ride, or greeting at the large doors before we start. You can even serve here in the tech booth. We're always looking for volunteers. We would love to have you. It could be, it doesn't matter where you serve. It's all important. 
And I have talked about the importance of service to the group, and I've shared my story about how service work has changed my life. I've made it clear why recovery groups need service, that I'm sure there are people in the room that are hearing this right now and they're thinking, but there's plenty of other people out there doing service work, why me? They don't need me. You're right, the meetings are gonna happen. It never ceases to amaze me how God provides the people as needed. So the real question that we wanna answer tonight is, why do I need to do service work? Purton. We have a few answers for tonight since service is essential for your permanent and growing recovery. So pull out your cute little message notes. We're gonna take notes together. All right. Number one, service gets us <coughs> out of our selfishness and self-centeredness. Yeah. What, me? No, not I. <laughs> selfishness and self-centeredness is the root of all of our problems. Don't you know who I think I am? Okay. There's more going on in life than us and our situations. And getting out there helping others relieves us from these thoughts we focus on. So if you're sitting here thinking, my life's a mess, probably it is, mine is, why do I have to help another? Well, service work gets us out of our head and we can stop focusing on the problem. Service reminds us we're not alone in our struggles. When you pick up that phone, even when you don't want to, when someone is calling you and you're having a bad day, you're reminded you're not alone. If we can take the focus off our problems and find solutions to solve our problems, we have no chance at living life. Me, me, me used to be, what can I get out of this? I loved that, you know? When this shifts to what can I give, we start to recover. This leads me to another reason we want to get involved in service work. Number two, service work saves our life. Yes, it helps us out. There's a death threat found early in the big book of AA, which says if we don't serve, we will die. This may sound extreme, but it's true. The program works by helping others. This is what saves our life. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Okay, thanks. It, part <laughs> it was particularly, it particularly was it imperative to work with others as we had worked with me. Faith without works was dead, he said, and how appallingly true for the alcoholic. For if an alcoholic failed to perfect and enlarge his spiritual life through work and self-sacrifice for others, he could not survive the certain trials and low spots ahead. If he, did, if he did not work, he would surely drink again, and if he drank, he would surely die. Then faith would be dead indeed. It is with us just like that. The Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 14. This program of recovery works if we work it. And sometimes it's quickly, sometimes it's slowly. But working with others is a part of how the program works. This is the same no matter what struggle we have. We, we, thank you. we return to drugs or alcohol or codependent tendencies. We don't. We who have found this program and found hope must continue to help others the way we were helped. If we don't, then do we really have faith in God and in this program? James 2, 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action is dead. Having faith in the program of recovery alone leads to death because faith without works is dead. Number three, service work helps regulate our brain chemistry. This is a good one, right guys? You're gonna find out a lot of good stuff here. So my friends out here that want the science behind it all, Helping others triggers impacts to our brain in many positive ways. When we help others, our brains release oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine. These hormones have the effect of boosting our mood and counteract the effect of cortisol, the stress hormone. So essentially, get this guys, it's a new way to get high, okay? <laughs> Woo! All for the purpose of science. Disclosure here now. Though service work isn't a replacement for the steps, 
While yes, there are the same chemicals that are released in our body when we use drugs, let's not go out there and try to get high by helping others and avoid the rest of the work. We see this often, steps one, two, then 12. There are lots of those of us that are codependents that are, try, that are good at trying to make ourselves feel good by helping others. I know all about it. I'm a perfectionist at that. That is why, that is not what service is about, really. Sometimes we have to stop and ask ourselves, are you serving out of honest and self-sacrifice and love or out of your codependent needs? And um, sometimes I fail short. If you're going through a period of depression or have a huge case of, I don't want to do this anymore, helping others will help you feel better. And number four, service gives us a sense of belonging. Guys, don't you all want to belong? I love y'all. We need, thanks, we need other people in recovery. Isolation is not our friend. We need to get out of ourselves and connected to people. To the person that is listening right now that is saying, I really don't like people and social connections are not my favorite, I get you. I feel you totally. I do. You're not alone. You may be like me thinking, I don't want these relationships with others, but you do need them. Trust me, you'll be happy after you have them, and it'll be the best day ever. <laughs> Loneliness is not our friend. That is when you are weak for enemy attacks. Volunteering and helping others can help us feel a sense of belonging. Making new friends and connect with our communities. And number five, recovery needs us, guys. We're needed. AA has a responsible statement, and I think the same statement applies to each of us here. <laughs> we have found a solution to a hopeless state of mind, and we are responsible for sharing the message with others. Thanks. I am responsible when anyone anywhere reaches out for help. I want the hand of CR to always be there, and for that, I am responsible. Repeat that with me, guys. I am responsible when anyone, anywhere reaches out for help. I want the hand of CR to be there. And for that, I am responsible. You guys sound amazing. Wow. Are you sharing your story with newcomers? We go into detox on Thursday nights, and people in there need hope. They really do. Your hope. If you're working the steps and have a sponsor and attend regularly, shine up, sign, shine up, shine up. That's the word I want to use, shine up. Shine up to share your experience at the next step table. We have that flyer, so utilize it. And number six, Jesus lived out service in his life. We read this in Mark 10, 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. Here at CR, we proclaim Jesus as our higher power. So if I say that Jesus is the power that brought me into recovery, and I do, because I don't know what else it was, and Jesus is the power and guiding force and the very source of my recovery, then maybe I need to look at how he lived and what he said as an example of how to live in recovery. Jesus fed people. Jesus listened to people. I need to get better at that one. Jesus healed people. Jesus restored people to himself and to God. Jesus touched people, even the untouchable ones. Jesus saved people, and Jesus saved you. In John 13, 34 through 35, we read, At the night before he was crucified, he gave these final instructions to his followers. He said, A new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this evidence, you will know that you are my disciples, and if you love one another. Now, note here, we use, the word love is used in this scripture, not the word service. Loving and service are not the same things. Our shirts say it, we should be salty, yep, and stay lit. This means shine Jesus' light and help others' lives better. Well, if you're going around serving people from a not-so-loving place, mm, it doesn't go well, trust me. You're not going to make anyone's life better. 
I have experience in this, a lot of it, you know, so just true story. I have learned it is possible to serve without loving, but I don't believe Jesus taught that it is possible to love without serving. When we decide to turn our will and our lives over to Jesus, that means we seek to follow in his ways. Jesus taught us how to do this. Jesus taught in parables so that people could understand him better. And tonight, we are going to look at one of these stories as we close. I have to take my glasses off to see. It's kind, of, it's kind of blurry. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, and pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to the inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him, Jesus told him, go and do likewise. When Jesus explained, put the glasses back on, when Jesus explained that way to eternal life is to love God and love our neighbors as ourselves, he was questioned about the definition of neighbor. He used the parable to explain what being a neighbor entails at the time. The Samaritans and Jewish people didn't associate with one another. In the parable, a Jewish man was stripped, beaten, robbed, and left half dead, lying in the street. He was ignored by the passing priest and Levite, both of whom should have been his allies. The least likely person to help him was the Samaritan, but he was the only one who stopped, thus being a true neighbor. The parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us several lessons, but the heart of the message is to love one another. Even if we're busy, we're tired, even if we're late, got to slow down. Even if we don't know them, hey, you make a new friend, or we don't like, like them. You know, that's, that's my favorite. Even if you don't like them, you're supposed to help them anyways. We are still called to love. And Jesus has taught us that to love one another is to serve one another. So do what... So do what we say about service and... Oh, good job, guys. I love that. Are you engaging in service in your recovery? Recovery teaches us how to be salty. Hey, there you go. Meaning while working the steps, we can learn how to be good to those around us because the transformation is happen happening within us. Then it teaches us how to let that light shine so others can see Jesus in us. We can be a giant rainbow. So I encourage you today to ask yourself, are you being salty and staying lit? The band is going to make their way back up here. Yes. I'm not going to sing for y'all, but that's okay. I know, I know. that. Yeah, I'm going to get a tambourine, so we're going to get that going. You are not given this freedom you have today to keep to yourself. When each of you came in tonight, you were handed, or it was handed to you in your seats, a small green piece of paper. Yeah, I lost my place. Um, 
Yep, small green paper. Yeah, this paper tonight is for you to choose to make a commitment to service. As you will see, there are many ways to serve, and we have given you plenty of examples so that you can make a commitment tonight. Here at CR, we're always looking. Maybe you have worked the 12 steps with a sponsor, but like me, keep thinking you don't have time to sponsor others, or you may still think you have nothing to offer and fear is holding you back. Oh, I encourage you tonight to make the decision to sponsor others. You can write that down. If you have a car and are willing to give others a ride, write that down. New people would love to be here at our meeting. It could be growing. Maybe this week you're going to commit to getting a home group. We're looking here and start serving. If tonight your decision is to serve at CR, you can write your name and phone number. We'll be standing outside these doors, right at the next step table, and collecting them. We'll have someone from our team reach out. There's also a phone number on the back of your handout you were given that you can text to get more information. I encourage you to get involved in service. You will not regret it. And I have not done this perfectly, nor do I do it perfectly. There's a lot of times I get aggravated, irritated, and I just can't find the time to do anything. But it is worth it. Let us stand for prayer. All right. Oh, Father God, help us to see areas that we could be loving others the way you have loved us. Help us to get out of ourselves and commit to serving others the way you have taught us to. Guide us to those we, we could help of your love, your power, and your way of life. In Jesus' name, amen.